Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 97 of the year 2019 to appoint officials at the Interior Ministry. The appointees are Brigadier Abdullah Khalifa Abdullah Al Jairan as General Director of the Capital Governance Police Directorate. Brigadier Fawaz Hassan Isa Al Hassan as Commandant of the Royal Police Academy in the rank of General Director. Brigadier Hamad Ali Jabr Al Marri as Deputy Inspector General in the rank of General Director. Brigadier Saleh Rashid Fahad Al Dusri as Director General of Mahara Governance Police Directorate. Brigadier Mohammed Abdullah Ahmed Al Haram as Assistant Under Secretary for Planning and Organization. Brigadier Khamis Mohammed Al Sahel Khamis as Assistant Under Secretary for Administrative Affairs. Brigadier Khalid Rabia Hamad Al Sinan as the General Director of the Northern Governance Police Directorate. Colonel Abdullah Khalid Abdullah Al Khalifa as General Director of the Southern Governance Police Directorate. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, issued Edict 31 of the year 2019, appointing directors at the Ministry of Interior. The appointed directors are Colonel Mohammed Ahmed Ismail Al Ghadir, Colonel Abdullah Hassan Abdul Malik Al Sa'i, Colonel Khalid Khalifa Hamad Al Kabi, Colonel Isa Abdullah Mayouf Al Rmehi. Colonel Abdul Wahab Rashid Ahmed Bunashi, Colonel Adnan Hassan Mohammed Al Kattan, Colonel Hamad Abdullah Mbarak Dusri, Colonel Daid Isa Hamad Al Kuwari, Colonel Anas Hilal Mhanna Al Shaiji, Colonel Ahmed Mohammed Ghanim Al Mahza, Colonel Luay Abdul Rahman Abdullah, Lieutenant Colonel Mohammed Khalifa Ali Al Bin Ghadir. Lieutenant Colonel Abdullah Mohammed Abdullah Ahmed, Lieutenant Colonel Khalid Mohammed Abdullah Sada, Lieutenant Colonel Rashid Hamad Rashid Al Dusri, Lieutenant Colonel Fahad Ibrahim Yusuf Msamah, Lieutenant Colonel Abdul Rauf Hamad Abdullah Al Maraj, Lieutenant Colonel Mohammed Abdullah Ghaith Shakrallah, Lieutenant Colonel Hamad Abdul Rahman Ali Al Abdul Karim. Lieutenant Colonel Abdullah Abdul Aziz Al Husseini, Lieutenant Colonel Ghazi Ali Isa Al Sabi'i, Lieutenant Colonel Muhammad Khalid Muhammad Al Bouainin, Lieutenant Colonel Fawaz Nasr Muhammad Al Jiran, Major Muna Muhammad Muhammad Al Gallaf, Major Ali Abdullah Ahmed Abdullah, Major Budur Muadh Hassan Ahmed, Major Ahad Rashid Najm Al Najm. Major Jasim Mohammed Ibrahim Al Mulla, Major Yusuf Ahmed Abd Abdullah Ramadan, Major Hisham Ibrahim Jasim Mohammed, Major Mohammed Jasim Mohammed Al Khudri. The edict stipulates that the Minister of Interior shall appoint the directors in the vacant directorates of the Interior Ministry in accordance with the tasks and responsibilities of each directorate, taking into account the qualifications and experience of each of them. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince also issued Edict 32 of the year 2019, appointing directors at the Interior Ministry's Customs Affairs as follows. According to the edict, Amal Isa Dawood Abu Jandal was appointed Director of Information Systems and and Walid Yusuf Mbarak Ajur as Director of Planning and Customs Policies, both at the Customs Affairs. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the Director General of the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development, Abdul Wahab Ahmed Al Badr, at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince noted that Bahrain continues to introduce developmental initiatives that drive growth and deliver on the aspirations of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, adding that these efforts create new opportunities for citizens. His Royal Highness noted that the Kuwait 
Kuwait uh, continuous support to Bahrain, which reflects the depth of the long-standing bilateral relations between the two countries. His Royal Highness also commended Kuwait's efforts in simulating regional development. For his part, the Director General expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for advancing Bahrain-Kuwait relations, wishing the kingdom continued progress and prosperity. The meeting was attended by the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Wa'il bin Nasser Al Mbarak. The Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, patronized and opened the Conference on Comprehensive Healthcare Coverage, which was organized by the Supreme Council for Health. In partnership with the Joint Learning Network for Universal Health Coverage, JLN, and was attended by ministers, various invitees, and participants from 34 countries from across the world. The Deputy Premier affirmed the government's keenness on establishing sustainable health care services while maintaining the highest standards of quality for all as part of the path of sustainable development as drawn by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Deputy Premier said that the field of healthcare is on its way towards further progress as part of the national government plan which was approved by the cabinet and has been supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The government for reforming the healthcare sector by 2025 by which time sustainable Sustainable healthcare services and its quality would be achieved through sufficient funding and employment of human resources. As for the conference, the Deputy Premier said that it reflects Bahrain's keenness on hosting specialized medical events and on reinforcing cooperation and exchanging expertise between itself and regional and international companies in all sectors and especially the field of healthcare. He added that the healthcare sector in Bahrain is experiencing progress in terms of delivering its services in in a socially just manner across all the country's areas. He then expressed appreciation for the efforts of the Supreme Council for Health as led by Lieutenant General Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and praised the central role that the council is playing in the development of the healthcare sector in Bahrain. During the opening ceremony, the chairman of the council gave a speech in which he said that holding the conference in Bahrain reflects the support that the sector enjoys thanks to directives and ongoing support by His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. He expressed thanks and appreciation for the Deputy Prime Minister for opening the conference, which he said reflects the government's support for the field of health care in the kingdom. He also emphasized the importance of regional and international partners to further develop the field. The chairman thanked the supporters of the conference, including the Minister of Health, Faiqa Saleh, as well as others in the public, private and civil sectors. Under the patronage of the Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Physical Balance, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, signed an agreement funding a 100 million US dollar 40 kV grid transmission project between the government of Bahrain and the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development. On this occasion, the Minister of Finance expressed thanks to Kuwait for its unlimited support to the development process in the kingdom praising the historic brotherly ties between the two countries and their brotherly people. For his part, the Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Engineer Wa'il bin Nasr al Mbarak, stated that the agreement comes in the context of joint cooperation between the two countries, which contributes to the development of basic electricity networks to the fullest. The capital's governor, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, received his counterpart from South Korea along with his accompanying delegation in the attendance of the chairman of the Supreme Council for Health, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. At first, the governor welcomed his Korean counterpart and affirmed the depth of the bilateral relations, which he said is experiencing ongoing progress in all fields. He then briefed his Korean guest on the progress that Manama has been experiencing thanks to the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and said that the city 
city possesses long-standing features that distinguish it in many ways, which allow it to attract capital and have cemented its status as an investment hub. For his part, the Korean governor praised the bilateral ties, which he said is experiencing progress on all levels. The Ministry of Youth and Sports and the Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies have signed a memorandum of understanding in order to make full use of the expert opinion to further develop the field of sports youth in the kingdom. The MOU comes as a result of the directives of His Majesty the King's Representative for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the event was attended by the member of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Ministry's Coordination, Implementation and Follow-up Committee is Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa. The MOU entails the exchange of data and expertise based on the research center studies, polls, events and activities and to conduct joint projects in the fields of training, research and raising awareness. To mark the occasion, the Minister of Youth and Sports, Ayman Al Mu'ayyad, affirmed the importance of cooperating with research organizations based on the directives of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad in order to to improve the field according to scientific studies. For his part, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid affirmed his keenness on signing the MOU, which he said will benefit the field of youth and sports in the kingdom and expressed thanks for the role of His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa in signing the MOU. For his part, Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed said that the MOU comes as part of the center's efforts to deepen the cooperative efforts with various governmental organizations which would benefit from the scientific research, workshops and other activities the center conducts. The Judicial and Legal Studies Institute held the closing ceremony of the Professional Legal Practice Certificate Program in the presence of the Minister of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments, Sheikh Khaled bin Ali Al Khalifa, and the Attorney General, Dr. Ali bin Fadl al -Bu'inin. The Minister of Justice stressed the importance of the training program and its distinctive training content, which aims to enable law graduates to practice legal work in English by training them on basic practical skills and providing them with important expertise to respond to different requirements in the labor market in English. The minister expressed thanks and appreciation to the companies and lawyers' offices involved in the implementation of this program organized by the Institute, expressing pride in the expertise and competencies of the kingdom in various fields of legal work. At the end of the ceremony, the Minister of Justice distributed certificates to the graduates of the Professional Certificate Program for Practicing Law in English. Under the patronage of the President of the Asian Football Confederation and FIFA Vice President Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, the Asian Football Confederation held last night in Hong Kong its annual ceremony for the year 2019. FIFA President Mr. Gianni Infantino and a number of senior guests from the sports field were present in the event. Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim distributed the awards in all the different categories and congratulated the winners. He asserted that awards were given to those who deserve them and that the Confederation is keen on honoring the achievers and those who exerted efforts and showed commitment throughout the year. He also pointed out that the ceremony is in honor as well to of the outstanding achievements of the Asian Football Confederation for the year 2019, adding that this is a strong motivation to build on these accomplishments. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and Chairman of the Economic Development Board patronized the fourth edition of the Bahrain Award for Entrepreneurship. For more on the topic, we are joined now by one of the winners, Ahmed Mahmoud. Hello, Mr. Ahmed. Hello. How can, are you? Can you tell us more about the award and your participation? Um, I would first like to thank uh, His Royal Highness, Sheikh Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for his constant encouragement and support of entrepreneurship in the region. Uh, Dictoria is the first and only NHRA licensed telemedicine application that connects patients with uh, on-demand medical doctors via video. Um, the prize we won was the Micro Entrepreneurship uh, Startup of the Year. 
basically it's an award uh, awarded to small companies uh, considering their uh, economic and social impact. Amazing. Well, what does it mean to you to actually win an award such as this, and how do you feel about it? Winning the award uh, means a lot to us, considering the caliber of innovation we have seen amongst participants, and uh, uh, giving us such a great opportunity, uh, it, is, uh, it is devastating. Yes, yes, that is great. Winner Ahmed Mahmoud, thank you very much for joining us. United Nations Bahrain partners with the General Council for Islamic Banks and Financial Institutions, CIBAFI, or CBAFI, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to organize the first of its kind forum being hosted in Bahrain, titled The Role of Islamic Finance in Achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. More in this report with Hiba Abdel Ghaffar. The role of Islamic finance in achieving sustainable development goals brings together UN officials with the private sector and relevant government officials from the MENA region and beyond to meet with senior executives of Islamic finance institutions across various countries to explore and share their different views regarding sustainability, governance and social responsibility. Bahrain not only has a very, very good regulatory framework uh, implemented by the central bank for all the banks including the Islamic banks but also has two big institutions that uh, are international institutions on Islamic uh, financing. It has IOFI that takes care of uh, regulation and it has Sabafi that takes care of the policy for the Islamic uh, industry. Uh, so we partnered with, uh, with Sabafi on that uh, and the idea was that um, we would like that the Islamic industry joined the global trend of having assets uh, or funds supporting assets, uh, supporting SDGs. Global challenges on climate change, on sustainability, they need global action. Cannot be done separately, country by country, or really at, uh, by, by institutions or only the, uh, the government sector. They require public sector in cooperation, collaboration with the private sector. In the same time, for Islamic finance, in the DNA of Islamic finance, we have values, we have principles that match strongly with sustainability agenda in general and with sustainable development goals. The forum is part of the ongoing UN and Bahrain efforts to work with partners such as General Council for Islamic Banks and Financial Institutions and the Government of Bahrain, especially the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, with the support of Under Secretary of International Affairs Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and through the UN Cooperation Framework that was signed to position Bahrain on the world stage of partners supporting SDGs and inclusive development. Development of the land, making people better, making life better, making the universe better, making the land better. This is all about Islam. So it's part and parcel of Islam. This means that Islamic banking, if it's, if it's all about Islam, it has to be embedded in its rules and regulations, ethical financing that aims at sustainability and the attainment of the United Nations Development Goals. The UN provides an interactive platform to discuss how different Islamic finance tools, as well as fintech and innovative solutions, could present valuable opportunities in achieving the SDGs, in addition to exploring how the industry might look to develop and adopt Islamic financial instruments to fund sustainable development goals. The role of Islamic finance in achieving sustainable development goals, opportunities and challenges are all discussed today in an executive knowledge sharing forum, gathering UN officials and leaders of the Islamic finance industry. Hiba Abdel Ghaffar, Bahrain International.